Assalamualaikum and welcome everyone to eSports Integrated Conference. And today with me in this session, I have Dr. Zatul Ifa Abu Hassan, the founder of eSports Medica, Richard Wee, the managing partner of Richard Wee Chambers, Chambers and Dato' Lat Shariman Abdullah, the strategic advisor for Wang Chigu and the founder and president of Malaysian eSports Federation. So before we kick off this panel, this session, let's uh, get to know our speakers uh, a bit more. Let's start with Dr. Zato. Dr. Zato, let's start with you. Let's talk a bit more about eSports Medica especially. Share with us the journey that led you uh, to bring this company to life. Okay, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And Assalamualaikum and good day to all the panels, organizers and all the uh, viewers. So, uh, a little bit about eSports Medica. So, actually, that is the short form of uh, eSports Medica Academic. So, we make oh. it uh, short and sweet eSports Medica. So, actually, it's an eSports Medical Academic. It's a combination of eSports, uh, medical area and also academic. So, basically, okay, what is eSports Medica? So, eSports Medica actually is a combination of several organizations. Okay? For example, uh, not for example. So uh, the first one is uh, Malaysia Youth Council or Majlis Bulu Malaysia (MBM), and then the second one is Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, University Science of Malaysia, uh, and then uh, Green Crescent Malaysia, and also Esport Darbusus. Okay, so uh, Esport America. So I'm the founder. So my co-founder is uh, Encik Muhammad Faris from uh, Esport uh, Esport uh, Darbusus (ESBK). So basically, in, in my team, in our team, in our team. Uh, so uh, we have um, several medical doctors. So all of them are medical experts in uh, medical area that is related to e-sport. For example, um, like, uh, yeah, it's related to um, eye, uh, hearing, and so on. Okay, the, the sitting posture, the mental health, and so on. So uh, all of them are medical experts. So um, so me, myself, uh, do involve in this organization, uh, Malaysian Youth Council, uh, Faculty of Medicine and Esports Darussus. So, uh, as far as I know, I think the the organizer also uh, inviting our president uh, from uh, Malaysian Youth Council. So today I'm representing uh, the president himself as well because you really be on the same page. So we'll uh, say the same thing. So so the 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 president send uh, his regards to everybody, um, and I hope for the best for the uh, esport uh, area. So. Um, uh, a little bit about eSport Medica. So basically, we are the, uh, so far as we know, that we are the pioneer for the eSport uh, medical team. So uh, in Malaysia, uh, so we are the pioneer. So uh, for now, we are uh, more focusing on um, youth. We are not focusing on pro player yet, but we are more focusing on eSport enthusiast, uh, people who, who like to get involved in eSports. Okay, and then uh, what we do? So basically, we... Uh, First thing first that we would like to do is we want to create uh, awareness on healthy gaming. So we get gaming hygiene. Uh, gaming hygiene is very important. Gaming right? hygiene. Gaming. Yes, we said the hashtag gaming hygiene. And then uh, we also um, do a lot of data collection because uh, we realize that there's a lot of uh, perception rather than facts. So we are collecting data for um, Esports in Malaysia about the medical health effect and so on, and also we would like to create uh, education awareness because not everybody can uh, become a pro player. So maybe they like to uh, create video games and so on. So we we try to create um, education awareness. So um, so far I said so uh, for now this is our third year in this industry, and we also actively involve. Um, in uh, a lot of Ministry of Youth and uh, Sport Malaysia activities. And um, and also last year, we have been officiated by our beloved Prime Minister during the Hari Beli Negara in Johor. Yeah, so that's that's all a little bit about eSport Medica. I see. And uh, wow, it, it, it really just hit me. I am in a room full of pioneers. We have a pioneer in medical field, uh, the pioneer in the law field, and also the, the founder himself of... Uh, the Malaysian Esports Federation. So, a bit nervous on my end right now. So, uh, let's move on to our next panelist, uh, Mr. Richard. Tell us a bit more about your involvement with esports. I mean, how did Richard Wee Chambers came to decide? Uh, hey, let's uh, let's let's go into esports law. Please uh, take the hey. take the spotlight. Hey, thank you, Harris. Thank you. Um, may I first uh, say thank you to Esports Integrated for the kind invitation to have all three of us here. It's always nice to meet and uh, speak to fellow esports uh, community members. 
Um, yeah, so I've been involved uh, in esports since about 2017. Uh, some background is that uh, I was uh, already doing work for sports work, particularly sports law. And uh, it was quite natural for us to uh, look into esports when it was developing in 2015. Uh, my colleagues and I started reading up uh, on the area quite frantically uh, and in depth for about a year uh, before we uh, announced to the world back in 2017 that uh, we are able to service esports clients. Uh, at the time, I was in another law firm. Uh, so if you Google, you probably find my old law firm called Mawing Kwan Associates. Uh, and, uh, but in 2019, uh, my team and I left MWK to establish uh, Richard V. Chambers. And uh, in fact, many times uh, when I uh, meet fellow esports community members, I have been informed that we are probably the first uh, group of lawyers back in 2017, 2018 to do esports. So it's a, it's a nice and honorable uh, uh, title to have. But uh, on our side, uh, we don't sit on our laurels. We continue to conduct research, uh, reading up on latest happenings on esports. Uh, and I mean, if you can uh, visit uh, RWC's website, you will see latest reports on uh, uh, disputes of uh, e in esports uh, in esports matters. So um, that's how I got involved. Uh, I I've been a lawyer since 1999. Uh, I just happened to love sports, and uh, esports was uh, a, a natural progression to get involved being a sports lawyer. So, so far, so good. And uh, I enjoy helping out the esports community. Thank you. I see. And uh, just a quick question from my side here. I'm just quite interested as well. How would you say, how developed is the law in, uh, in regulating this industry in Malaysia? Well, if you compare to, uh, we always refer to it as the traditional sports, right? Uh, football, basketball, blah, blah, blah. I, I think the associations in those sports are very well developed. Uh, you look at FIFA. FIFA has uh, extensive football law. They even have books on yes. football law. They, they conduct training and talks on football law. Example, there's an example. They're very far ahead. And uh, so I find esports uh, uh, a lot of chasing up to do. In fact, uh, I can share that uh, uh, during the previous uh, government in 2018, uh, I was actually assisting and appointed by the Perak state government to create uh, what would have been the very first esports tribunal. And uh, we were hoping to uh, make that as the uh, court of esports arbitration of the world uh, to be based in Ipoh wow. uh, at the time. Uh, but unfortunately, before we could finish the work, as we know, there was a change of government. Uh, and uh, I think the papers are still there. It's still with uh, the PUU. Uh, but I would have to leave it to the new government uh, whether they still want to engage us or they can always take our paper and hang, uh, 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 hand over to another set of lawyers to complete the work. But that's how far we are trying to develop, lah, Aris, you know, pushing the boundaries. Uh, for example, we collaborate with Adamas, anti-doping agency, to see how Adamas can come in and uh, uh, even people like that doctor, you know, work together with people like doctor yeah. to test uh, doping, etc., etc. Uh, and yeah, but so at the moment, it's work in progress. If you ask me, Haris, is WIP? It, uh, we are not in the cowboy zone anymore. We were quite cowboyish uh, four or five years ago. I think Dato Nat will know it was a real cowboy time at the time. But now, uh, people, whenever they organize tournaments, they uh, engage uh, con uh, players, they understand they need a contract. Uh, they need to go through certain rules and regulation for the tournament. I'm quite comforted when I nampak player player too and the organizer organizer too. They are very um, prihatin on uh, esports law, and uh, of course for us RWC, whenever they call us, they need our help. We just step in and help lah. I see. I see. That's very interesting. Yeah. I mean, uh, I would get it. I mean, back then it was basically. A very very new industry is sports in Malaysia, so yeah, I'm happy. To, I'm happy to hear that it's a work in progress, and I can see that uh, there is uh, a lot of work put in uh, regulating this industry. So finally, Dato Lad, please share with us your journey and experience with eSport. <laughs> I personally would like to know more about the founding of uh, the federation, the Malaysian eSports Federation, and exactly what do you guys do? 
Um, basically, uh, personally, I've been associated with uh, games for a long time. Uh, I used to play the pong game, the first oh, ever uh, invented. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I would compete. I I compete with my father. Was <laughs> uh, uh, So how it started was I was trying to stop my son from playing games. So he he was he's a gamer and then he likes to play and then a bit negligent on his studies or that. So and then he said, Dad, this is a big thing. So let me let me call my friends. So he invited all his friends. They came to my house and said, hey, This is a million dollar. Uh, at that time, already in uh, 2014, uh, already big. Uh, I, I I knew nothing about it, and then uh, I started uh, getting interest. I again I went to meet some youngsters, and they were talking, uh, telling me how how great this uh, new sports venture is. So uh, what I did was I booked a, a flight to Seoul to watch the World Championship for. League of Legends at that time, uh, so I went to and then uh, I went to the concert. Uh, Imagine Dragons were playing, and then thousands and thousands of people were there. People were queuing up to buy souvenirs, and you can only buy one. And I thought, oh wow, this is a big thing. And then I thought uh, it must be regulated by something, right? A body, because I come from a sports background. I used to be a national swimmer. I uh, represented Malaysia for at Sea Games in oh, okay. uh, 87. Uh, I I was uh, uh, I was involved in the rugby union, Kedah Rugby Union vice president, uh, and then I was a committee for AFC, uh, the uh -huh. uh, Asian Football Confederation. So I thought, hey, these young lads, right? Uh, I I think that you need to inject some kind of leadership. So that uh, at that time, esports uh, is a bit loose. Uh, it's uh, until a few years after I established, it was still a very toxic environment. <laughs> so young, <laughs> young, young kids behind a keyboard, this those keyboard yeah, 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 the online keyboard warriors. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. I won't say any any country lah, but some countries <laughs> were were banned at, at that time. So. I went to Korea and then met uh, the ISF, uh, International Esports Federation, and told them we want to establish one in Malaysia. And we, we I spoke to KJ and then got uh, Datuk Shapawi at that time. He was uh, the commissioner, commissioner of sports. Uh, oh, yes, yes. So we got the, the, the buy-in and then we, you know, we, are, we were the only the sixth country in the world that has government recognition for esports. That's quite an uh, advanced thing for Malaysia, proactive. I think we were, uh, the Malaysian government was very proactive at that time. So 2014 late, we got it established. 2015, we had uh, our launching. And then uh, I was a bit uh, uh, apprehensive. How many people really want to support us? So we, but uh, my committee, all of them were youngsters, right, uh, gamers, and they thought uh, they, they had confidence. So at that time, we didn't have any. The social media was just uh, Facebook. So we just uh, one week before launching, advertised in Facebook, and then but we took a very large uh, hall, uh, which was the Felda, the one Perdana Felda. If you go Kunduri there, you see it's very big hall, right? So they were lining up 500 chairs. So I thought, hey, wow. 500 chairs, that's too many. Take it out, take <laughs> it out. Just put 200 because I call the press. <laughs> I don't want to be embarrassed. So mm. it's, it's 500 chairs and then just fun row was uh, seated, right? So they say, don't worry, Pate. They call me Pate. Don't worry, Pate. People will come. And you know, it was standing room. It was standing room on the launching. I think uh, I don't know whether you or, or maybe both of you didn't go. But at that time, I, I was uh, very impressed, and then we worked hard. So what uh, that time uh, it wasn't called Malaysia Esports Federation yet. It was called uh, Esports Malaysia. So our job was to uh, we determined our job to be the promoter, 
uh, regulator and also to develop esports. The, even the name esports people haven't heard at that time. So we had to do a lot of promotion. I went to see the papers, went to talk to companies, and then uh, it was uh, quite um, uh, hill climbing lah. Uh, berat lah nak angkat tu. Uh, so at that time, the, but we had support from the community. Even our launching was launched by mm -hmm. the esports community. We didn't call any minister or that. So everybody, all the, who were present, they, uh, we, they, they just pronounced, we, esports community of Malaysia, launch esports Malaysia. So that was quite a fun story. I see. And would you say that uh, the Malaysian Esports Federation, uh, or back then the Esports uh, Malaysia, would you say that yeah. it's similar to um, the International Esports Federation that you uh, sort of uh, inspired by in Seoul, I believe? No, okay. Uh, Korea has Esports Korea. Oh, Esports uh, Korea, uh, yes. Korean Esports, Korean, Korean Esports Association, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also have, they, they have newly established a uh, world body. Which is, uh -huh. which is which is called esports uh, foundation uh, uh, esports uh, international esports federation okay so uh, right now they are in uh, Iliad in Israel for the 13th uh, world championship oh i so see so they appoint upon themselves uh, and then supported by the Korean government to be the international body for esports so, but they had no buy-ins yet at that time. So Malaysia was mm. one of the, the countries that supported them. So we are the sixth country. Now, now you, you have a hundred members already under over. So moving on to the next questions, um, I have to ask uh, the panelists here, why esports? So let's start with Dr. Zato. So in the medical field, you know, you have uh, a line of uh, specialty that you can go into. So why did you choose esports? Okay, uh, I remember when I first started to get involved uh, in eSport area, it is because that since I'm part of uh, Malaysian Youth Council, so in Malaysian Youth Council, um, I'm the one who, uh, like, uh, the one who have to uh, cater or responsible for the health side for the youth community in Malaysia. So uh, at that time, I remember that there's a lot of youth that like to involve in eSports. And then also that um, I've noticed that uh, not I've noticed that, and then we know that there's there's a large sum of money that been allocated for esport area. So at that point, uh, I do have uh, like several discussion with uh, some of my esports friends who I know for a long time, and then I ask them about the <laughs> about the the details of the uh, planning from the. Um, from the people who are responsible for the large sum of money and so on. Mm. And at, the, at that time, uh, I remember that um, I noticed that there's a lacking um, with the planning, whereby there's no uh, medical aspect that being mentioned in the planning. At that time, it's before the blueprint um, mm. being launched. So I think there's some lacking. And then uh, I told them that even uh, outside the Malaysia, we have um, several cases uh, with uh, SS gaming activity. So that's why I, I don't want that thing to happen among youth in Malaysia. So that's why I told my friend that we have to get together, collaborate, and then we form one team that can uh, spread the awareness. So uh, I know that people know that um, it is important to uh, play healthy. It means that not too excessive and so on. But I know that uh, we need someone that can always remind uh, people so um, usually we're, we're not too worried with the pro player because usually they have coach and um, and so on. But uh, among youth that don't have any coach, that's the one that we very um, um, a bit worried. Lah. So we want to have that awareness. So I remember that before we, um, we really officiate that we want to really get involved in the esport area, but kita, we, when we want to do something, it's not because we want to do it. It is because uh, people need it. So that's what we, we have to remember. If we want to do it, it's not because of we want to do it. It's because people need it. So uh, I remember at that time, um, me and my friend, uh, Dr. Khadija, she's a psychiatrist. So um, I remember that we opened a very small booth in Negeri Sembilan. We want to test whether 
our group is needed in the community or not. So I remember at that time, it's just a very small booth. And then there's uh, at the aircon dripping, the water is dripping and so on. It's very, a uh, very sad scene. Lah. It's not a very high prestigious booth. It's just a small booth. And then uh, because like we, we don't want, we want to know whether the esports community do accept our group or not. So surprisingly, surprisingly, there's a lot of youth that come to our booth and to ask about um, health related things. Because at, at that booth, we give uh, health, um, like nasihat, the, the free consultation that related mm -hmm. to esports. And also we have some screening to see whether they are have, they have tendency uh, for addiction or not. So I remember uh, it is a three days event. I remember mm -hmm. uh, on the second day, there are a few parents that come to me and say thank you to me. I'm quite surprised. I say, why do you want to thank me? And then uh, he said that uh, he feel relief because he know that there are some people that he can ask for help to ask for any um, advice and so on, how to 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 advise their sons if they play accessibility or not. Because like for example, for that parent, they have problem with their sons. Uh, don't want to do any homeworks and so on. So so they they quite relieved that there are some um, people that uh, can create awareness for a healthy gaming and so on. So that's why we keep continuing and doing that and so on until now. In future. Yep. Yeah, that's a very that's very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, can can I share my experience? Yeah, yes, please, please. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <that's okay>. uh, <laughs> We we had before land parties. You remember land parties? Mm, yes, before yes, the days, good days. They don't sleep. The good days mm. <laughs> before COVID. They would stay in there and play games for three three days, two nights without sleeping. <laughs> so I I think this will cost a lot. You know, you know. I I think the doctor knows. Right now, people are saying that sitting is the new smoking, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> you cannot sit too long. Yeah, you cannot sit too, too long. So. It's good that uh, I really applaud the effort of uh, yeah, medical yeah. doctor. Lah. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy that Malaysia also has starting to to, to to venture into the medical field of esports because um, I understand that some international fields they even have a personal psychiatrist taking care of their players. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was Team ah. Secret. They have a personal psychiatrist oh. making sure that the teams are not not just mental but physical health is also in check. So it's a uh, it's yeah. it's a good thing. So earlier on, uh, we have heard from uh, Mr. Richard and uh, Datuk Lat about their story on how they ventured into eSports. I mean, Datuk, shout out to your son. Uh, thank, thank you to your son for involving you in eSports to begin with. Oh, he's here. Taking my picture. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've also heard from Mr. Richard that it's a no-brainer. Uh, for for you to join esports uh, because you are naturally in uh, covering sports law already. However, I just want to double confirm here. Uh, let's start with Mr. Richard, right? Um, was there any other reason that uh, you wanted to go into esports? Is it because of passion, or is it really just a natural flow of things? You know, esports was a rising industry, and you just want to have a piece of that cake. Well, um, you are right about uh, the uh, rising industry part. Uh, that I will. I will say that there was uh, one of the reasons why we felt we should get ready because uh, eventually we know uh, clients, when they Google, they will find us as sports lawyers and it will be a bit strange if we don't know anything about esports. And uh, actually, when I was a young uh, law student, I was a gamer uh, in my own way back in the 1990s where we'll go to the arcade and pay 20 cents and play uh you know or daytona we pay uh, the golden coin we buy the gold <laughs> coin to put in daytona, daytona. and then uh, those days yeah then i used to play street fighter which is now almost a like mortal combat now uh so those, those are the days in the 90s late 80s early 90s uh it's just that I, if i had known esports would have uh, made so much uh, uh money I would have stayed on playing, man. You know, <laughs> I stopped playing when I, when I became a lawyer. I kind of stopped playing. Anyway, uh, so when uh, uh, when we, we saw esports was developing, what I did, I can share a story with you. I mean, that, that uh, uh, Harris, in fact, I, I actually downloaded Steam on my uh, iMac and uh, oh. to play Dota 2. Yeah. I see. So I was actually playing games in office 
every day uh, to understand the game. Uh, and then uh, I even downloaded uh, Mobile Legends on my phone to play at the time. So imagine a 40-year-old man like me playing games to understand. Uh, it's so it's a bit of... Uh, like a <laughs> <laughs> In fact, uh, all my sports lawyers, are uh, very happy because their job include uh, meeting sports players, going to stadium, uh, going to TV. You know, they, it's like uh, meeting the celebrity every day, you know. So uh, for us, uh, the time, there were four things I would say. Number one, yes, a growing trend of the sports. Number two was the fact that we are already sports lawyers and we were getting inquiries from clients. Number three was really my personal interest. I, I love uh, sports and I, even though I let go of uh, gaming, but I was still interested. And number four was uh, we didn't want some lawyer who come in to give uh, incorrect advice. No disrespect to my fellow members of the bar. Uh, we, we, want, we were very confident with our ability that uh, we are able to give uh, fairly accurate advice. So we wanted to make sure that we are the leader. And uh, and like I said, like we found out later that we were indeed not just the leader, but probably the only one at the time, back in 2017. So these are some of the uh, reasons lah, why we got involved at the time. I see. And uh, could the same be, uh, be said for your side, Dato Lai? Because uh, we know that, of course, the first person to actually mention to you about esports and the rising of the industry is, of course, your son. But what was the hook that made you decide to actually invest your effort into esports? Uh, until two years ago, I it was uh, for the since 19, 2014, uh, it was my daily ritual to read about. Uh, esports to mm. go and have a esports uh, meeting, meeting from ministers to players, all that. I I was really oh. invested in it. Uh, the reason was because I knew we were going somewhere special, especially Malaysia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At that time, the international Malaysians were always there. I don't know whether now still ada. International Sorry. for Dota two. I, I the went there, I flew to Seattle to support them. <laughs> of course, they, they, first masa the, that year, 2015, unfortunately, they, they, uh, we got disqualified. Uh, I mean, we didn't manage to get top four or something like that. that oh, wasn't, yeah, wasn't yeah, a good yeah. year. But for the, yes, 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 yes. 2014, 2014, we did very well. We got first place, I think. Made some mm. Malaysian millionaires at that time. <laughs> Young millionaires. <laughs> so, uh, after uh, eSports Malaysia was established, uh, we mm-hmm. I, I knew we we were, we have to put in some effort be, uh, mm-hmm. to make to promote eSports at that time because uh, we need the buy-ins from the industry, from the sponsors. Uh, I'm glad a couple of years after that, uh, people like uh, uh, Richard King and Doctor Zato came to help mm-hmm. out on the. But masa tu, I we felt like we're floating alone, yeah, just uh, uh, trying to promote and develop. Uh, but uh, I, I thought we started with trying too many things uh, because we thought that we had to do this and that and this. Uh, even the, the Richard mentioned the drugs uh, agency, right? We we presented our case to them as well. Yeah, doping. And, uh, mm. Because at that time, doping, anti-doping. It, uh, mm. At that time, also uh, Malaysia had uh, hit by some bad news because there were uh, some cheating uh, involved in uh, I cannot remember the sport. I think it could, it could be Dota two. Yes, I believe it was uh, it was uh, yeah. uh, game fixing, correct? Game fixing. We won't say correct. who. <laughs> uh, we we cannot <laughs> say who. <laughs> let's let's not get into that uh, that mess. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. We had to invest ourselves so that the sports can 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 uh, can flourish. I think at that time, uh, it was I just see. for the country, lah. Masa tu. Uh. I see. I see. So, um, actually, right. Uh, that being said, let's 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 uh, speed through the next question, right? So, let's talk about the ideal esports environment. I want to have uh, three point of view because we right now we have uh, a federation's point of view, we have a legal point of view, and we have a medical point of view. So, let's start with Datulat again. Datulat, uh, just uh, from your perspective, if let's say you are given um, the highest authority for your segment, 
for for your for your segment Min- of the industry. Minister of sports. Yeah, let's say let's say you are the <laughs> minister of sports. <laughs> so, um, how would you run this yeah. industry, this esports industry, if you have the power to yeah. manage it all, manage it all that in Malaysia? That is a personal story. Hmm. Okay. This is a personal story with, with the minister, current minister of sports. When Uh-oh. we started esports, uh, no, no, it's, it's good, it's good. Uh, okay. He's <laughs> it, it, my brother. <laughs> we, there was a lot of worry because people do not know what is, is this uh, regulating this esport entails to, right? When uh, at, the, at the event of uh, when we started esports mm. Malaysia, so my brother. He was a member of parliament at that time. He, when I start, we started this parliament, he was the first to come up with the uh, narrative against esports. Yeah, there were a, a lot of people worried, but in parliament, the first one to come up with, hey, let's not encourage our kids to do this. <laughs> so, but I'm so glad now. Uh, he is one of the most, the, the biggest proponent of esports. <laughs> So okay. Uh, what I, I think is everything starts from infrastructure. I think because we have the people already. There are more than eleven million esports followers in Malaysia, mm. from a, can, uh, a country, a nation of only thirty-two million. We have half of our nation are esports followers, enthusiasts. Uh, they play game with their dads. They play games in the car while waiting for bus. So, what we need now is infrastructure. For esports, e- e- the first infrastructure they need is a cheap and reliable uh, line connection line. Betul tak? Because mm, even now yep. our zoom pun sekat sekat, kan? Yes. Uh, so we need that. Uh, and these people they pay. Don't worry, Telecom Malaysia. Don't worry, <laughs> they will pay. They will pay. So just provide all this. Uh, because we are a bit lacking, lah, on on that side. Since 2014 until now, I think it's almost same, right? Okay, infrastructure. We need stadiums like Korea. We have a team from Sports uh, Ministry. If they can go and visit Korea and see, you don't. It hasn't. You don't have to uh, be a dedicated one, but it must be esports friendly. You know, mm. um, Doc mentioned something just now which triggered my memory. We did a study, yeah. Okay. When we were promoting in the initial, day, initial days. We did a study on we asked what kind of environment you want. Like your mm. question, uh, Haris, yeah. Mm-hmm. What kind of environment you want? Uh, for this ideal esports infrastructure, if there's a stadium or you play in your CC, right? Mm-hmm. They say good toilets. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, and every, <laughs> the the graph is so high on good good toilets. You see that uh, high hygiene, yeah? You mentioned hygiene. It's <laughs> is something you really need in esports, especially among players, whether pro or non pro, because. We have this uh, incident where the opponent used the body order to distract. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, it sounds funny now, <laughs> but those in the, those days they use body order to distract the, the competitor. <laughs> so when the other people are playing, they will stand up and we, yeah, they with their body order. <laughs> their body body order. <laughs> so that's very bad. It, it's a true story. Another two so, is that another two hurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While promoting it, yeah, uh, around 2015, around SPM time, right? I have mm-hmm. parents waiting outside my house, mm-hmm. uh, scolding me and say, "Why do you promote this? My son didn't study last night <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> he listens to you promoting esports." Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> That almost escalated into something else, but uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Tapi, uh, you can drama. So, mm-hmm. drama, drama, drama. So those were the days, lah. Now, now, oh, and then uh, you go have children uh, living uh, out their house, yeah, running away from home, running away from universities, yeah, to mm. play games. Mm. So, 
I see. So yeah, I think you have to curb on other things that is involved. Most of the the students that uh, run away from home or uh, uh, they go out while the parents are sleeping, they are involved in something more than just playing mm-hmm. games. Uh, yes, correct. It could be gambling. It could be mm-hmm. mental health issues, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Because uh, a, a few, yeah, a few mm-hmm. that I encountered with, uh, some time ago was because of gambling. Uh, so they run away from home because they, they got to make back their money, the money they lost. Mm. Mm. So uh, interesting so enough about to, gambling. Yeah. So last time, right, all the CCs, uh, cyber cafes, uh, mm. esports centers, you would say, it, sometimes uh, there'll be a hidden section regarding gambling as well. So when it comes to gambling, it's a legal matter as well in Malaysia. So speaking of legal matter, uh, let's move on to Richard. Richard, for your point of view, what would be the ideal environment? What would you impose to, to, to mm. you know, improve the situation, the legal situation of esports in Malaysia? Yeah, I, I must say it's actually a very good question because it's a, a question of aspiration. Uh, it's something where I think most of us uh, aspire towards. So um, for me, the ideal esports uh, environment, and this is where we don't really need to compare with other countries because they are equally uh, still not ready to, right? So we can lead it in a Malaysian way and maybe even lead the world. Uh, I would first start with um, uh, putting into place an effective esports uh, tribunal, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, once you have uh, a proper court of arbitration for sports uh, or a tribunal for sports, and in this case is esports, everything will flow down because uh, all parties know that they can seek remedies in a particular tribunal. And then eventually people uh, like Dato Lat, when, when they are running the esports federation, they need to make sure they know the law and rules very well because they know that they can take the, the case to the tribunal or they may be taken to the tribunal, for example. So then normally when people um, they start reading up on the law, the rules and regulation and uh, applying and practicing, you see a higher level of uh, sports um, governance. And that is where one of the, the second problem, which is uh, the problem of governance. So the first issue was issue about dispute resolution and uh, getting uh, a proper and effective tribunal to enforce the rules. Next one is governance. So Dato Lat knows about this because while we have IESF in Korea, we have also AESF. We have a few other, even we have an esports uh, integrity coalition in UK and Europe, ASIC. Uh, but there is no one particular uh, uh, IOC uh, or OIC uh, or, or, or FIFA. We don't have one right on top. And even if they have, it's not uh, sufficiently strong. So uh, governance in esports is a challenge simply because we have to deal with the publishers and the publishers at the end of the day control the intellectual property of the games. So that's where most uh, people uh, like Datola when he was running ESM have that challenge. So I would recommend that governance in esports must include publishers. In fact, I wrote an article about this uh, where we think that uh, if you form uh, a world federation, all the publishers must have a stakeholder in that federation. Uh, then that will give them a say uh, of the future of the game. Then the, the third element uh, is fairness, issue of fairness, issue of uh, fair play, issue of uh, integrity. So back to your question, uh, the example that led to this question about uh, uh, gambling. So uh, like any other sports, we love sports because it's fair because anybody can beat anybody at any day and that's why people like sports uh, even the best can fall um so esports must embrace that or else people will lose hope on esports people will lose uh, their uh, relationship with esports so uh, we need to put into place which is the one i said wip work in progress uh, an effective regime to curtail uh, abuse of uh, doping and uh, abuse of uh, gaming, uh, 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 what do you call this, gambling. So even like, for example, simple things like, uh, uh, you know, um, manipulation of uh, the games. Uh, we, we call it 
e-doping, you know. Mm. Uh, 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 where we, 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 then we have also this uh, uh, gambling uh, by buying uh, boxes and uh, buying uh, um, certain uh, what do you call these uh, gifts from the game, which actually there's an element of gambling involved. Uh, these are all the things which we have to look at. And uh, outside Malaysia, because we don't have this in Malaysia, outside Malaysia, you can even put a bet that you are going to lose the game. So that is where uh, uh, the betting agencies outside Malaysia, that must be curtailed. Uh, because that's happened before. That, that was the case that Tato Lau was talking about. Certain players, they bet on themselves to lose. So, uh, so once we put into, uh, into place a certain uh, structure, administration and governance to, to manage this, then you will see, I repeat, the uh, subscription towards uh, sports law, e-sports law will rise because people will need to understand the, the, the rules and regulation of e-sports because there's a tribunal. And then with the effective governance, we will also have enforcement against integrity, uh, so uh, uh, enforcement for integrity and against uh, 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 doping, blah, blah, blah. So that's my ideal uh, environment. Of course, we need to... Um, we need to build this environment for esports. We cannot just take football or basketball and apply to esports. It doesn't work. Uh, yeah, we need to correct. have a it's model. Totally different. Mm. Correct. So, it, it, to me, I always advise the people in governance: is don't look at football to copy. You can look at badminton for ideas, but you start with the game that we have, and then you build this way. Uh, instead of taking a model and, and force, because it won't work. Uh, so like I said, now we can see even the e, uh, MESF, the Malaysian Esports Federation, they're slowly developing the rules and regulation, uh, man managing the tournaments, uh, controlling, uh, sorry, uh, putting into place a uniform rules. So it will take time, uh, Harris. I mean, uh, the Olympic took many, many years to become what it is. Uh, the World Cup football took many, many years to become what it is. And uh, even the Thomas Cup, the famous Thomas Cup badminton took many, many decades to be where it is now. So I foresee eSports will need another 5 to 10 years before it becomes uh, a very, very organized uh, uh, sporting activity. I see. I see. Thank you very much for that point of view. So, uh, a very quick... Uh, moving forward to Dr. Zato, from a medical perspective, especially since... Uh, Esports Medica is one of the pioneers of um, organization that uh, offer medical consultations on esports. So, based uh, based on your perspective, what would be the suggestions that you would uh, have to improve the environment, the esports environment in Malaysia, medically speaking? Okay, uh, I reckon uh, current generation towards an ideal scene um, slowly but surely, like and. But if we look uh, at the eSport blueprint, it's already started and growing. If we look uh, on the blueprint itself, it already mentioned about the mental health and so on. So it's already started, it's already there. Just that from our side, from the medical side, um, we think that um, more implementation on rules and regulation on using vulgar words during the tournament, or during the streaming. I think there should be a rules or uh, any implementation say maybe we uh, we should block that audience and so on because uh, for now, um, because uh, my psychiatrist in my in our team, we have three psychiatrists and they always uh, have patients that uh, have a problem with cyberbullying. So you, mm. usually they cannot stand about the vulgar words. So some of the patient is uh, professional streamers and so on. So, so they have that issue. Uh, so, so, so I think it is one of the thing that have to uh, put at the center about the information on the rules and regulation. Okay, so maybe we should block it and so on. And one more thing is that I think uh, we should have an awareness on um, list of games that is suitable um, uh, for a certain age. Because I see, I see. If we, if we see for now, like... Uh, a lot of parents allowed their children to play games, but they did not know the content of the game unless they are gamers as well. 
So mm. we think that it's better if we can create awareness listing all the games that is suitable for certain age so that they know um, what types of games that is suitable for their children. So I think this is very important, especially for children. Okay, so basically, then, this campaign that you mentioned mm. is driving towards uh, awareness for the parents themselves. Yes, yes. Because like for Ispa Medica, we are not uh, only giving awareness to uh, players. Uh, we also uh, give awareness to parents. So that's, that's what we I do see. right now. And also, I think what I can see in, in current situation, I think uh, it's better to have an openness in uh, collaborations. So for me, I think more collaboration is better so that we can uh, put uh, a lot of experts in um, one area and then we try to build something that is very good for the nation. And also, um, ha, one more thing. So um, <laughs> usually we are not yet to tambah tambah. And then, uh, I, I realize that usually when uh, in esports, uh, usually people will always do a tournament. It's just a mm-hmm. tournament. I mean, like the first you have this, I give the price and so on. So, so we think it's better to uh, put something like uh, in terms of education, like awareness about anything. It's not only tournament. Kenapa kita nak habiskan a lot of money to do a tournament, uh, whereby we can put other things as well as something else. Uh, so, so I think it, it's something that maybe you can say that smoking is bad, and uh, also don't don't play these things and it's a lot of because like. For you and children, usually they will listen to the idol. Uh, yes, yes. It sounds cliche, but actually it, it do really works when the idol say something. And then if you look at uh, some of the streamers, they only play, um, not uh, it's not within the solid time during the praying mm. time. So it means that their, their viewers and so, and so on know that the, they have to pray. So something mm. like that. So you should show a good example. Because I I realized that um, for now uh, a lot of tournaments is only about tournament. Actually, you can do more than that. You can spread awareness about COVID and something. That's something that we we try to do. We we spread awareness uh, about COVID awareness among uh, players and so on. Because uh, maybe we'll be second the keyboard and something like that. So do, that what we we would like to do. And then one more thing that I think what we can do to have an ideal environment, we sport environment, lah, kan? Because if you want to uh, make e-sport as part of sports, they say that it is sports. So, eh? Kata dia sama macam sport. Tapi if you look for other sport, they have their own medical team. So, kalau football, yes, kan, yes, you just say, oh, terus orang datang and then they, they mm. will try to help the players and so on. So, I think yep. in e-sport, instead of doing the tournament, they must have a medical team. Because I have one experience whereby masa tu first time, I buka boot dekat uh, Negeri Sembilan. Uh, there's one incident whereby there are one player come to us and uh, ask for our help. And then w- when I check, and my friend check, actually uh, the earphone cover is stuck in his ear. Uh, yeah. So it's, it is not reachable. <laughs> okay? So maybe people say, hey, why do you need medical team? You tak ada papa, tak ada apa kan? You, it's not a physical sport and so on. But that thing happened. So it's very important because if, if that person try to take out the earbud not at the proper way, it can cause trauma. It can yes. cause um, more uh, more damage than it done. already has done. Yeah, yes. mm. and you know what? At that time, actually, we don't bring any any apparatus that can take out the the, the earphone cover. So what we uh. did is, luckily at that time, there's a mini pedi, the medical and pedicure shop, just beside oh. the <laughs> tournament area, and then we asked for a tweezer and then, uh, also for aqua soap. So that that what we did. <laughs> it's from the Medi Pedi shop, and then we tried to take out the the earphone cover and something. Like that. So so that thing do happen. So we, I think we do need a, a medical team at the tournament. No, yes, area. I do. I do agree. Um, I believe that uh, most esports team they do need a medical team at least. Uh, Cardiac arrest. Yes, because uh, I've yeah. actually heard of a story whereby, uh, last time this one is not a pro player, like it's just a casual gamer at a cyber cafe, oh. but. Uh, he actually got lost in the game and, you know, he forgot to track his time on the game. He actually played Diablo for three days straight, if I'm not mistaken, and he actually just oh had a cardiac arrest and died on scene. Oh. So, oh. I think it's yes. actually quite important to improve the medical aspect in esports as well. You know, to have someone to constantly remind them to take care of their mental and physical state. Uh, not just that, nowadays, uh, social state is actually quite important as well. So, actually, we are running out of time for this session. 
And uh, I just have to ask this final question to each and every one of you. So let's start with Mr. Richard. Richard, would you say that uh, esports, this new industry, has changed the game for law practice? Uh, to some extent, I think uh, most law law firms, uh, Dato Lat will know he's uh, also a, a lawyer. Um, I think most lawyers are traditional in Malaysia. Uh, lawyers in Malaysia still prefer to do uh, litigation, uh, conveyancing, and whatnot. So it take it it will slowly adapt and embrace esports. So I wouldn't say there's a massive impact, but there have been some new lawyer, uh, new legal firms. Uh, so or should I say? new interest from legal firms to do esports so there is some impact there mm. i see and Most uh, them are probably gamers <laughs> yeah yeah that too <laughs> Most Most probably. gamers yeah uh, and, and also can i add something to what can i can i add something to what doctor said i i love what you say about yes. having uh, doctors at the medical uh, team at the tournaments mm -hmm. i would like to also say that uh, actually we should have some kind of legal officer at every tournament, uh, yes, I think that, that would be ideal. Yeah, it would be ideal to have uh, a legal officer who can also act something like a marshal. They have marshals in the tournament. Of course, it's slightly different. It's a uh, marshaling tournament, yeah. But maybe we can have a legal officer to become uh, like the referee, you know, the ultimate referee. So there's something uh, tournaments should go uh, towards too. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, doctor, so um, in the medical field, can we see more growth uh, in the medical field for esports in Malaysia? Yes, yes, I, I do think so because as we know that if we uh, if that individual play excessively, there are some risks uh, that may happen uh, on their uh, medical aspect and so on. So, so we do think that um, for now, actually, it's already started because um, um, in medical field, we use games for rehabilitation and so on. So, so right. the, the esports. Uh, Eric is already there. So, of course, uh, it is growing uh, right now. And then uh, I've also been told that uh, actually uh, soon that each club or each um, each group players will have their own psychiatrist. So, that's what I've been told. So, so <laughs> you see, it's already started. Uh, even though that Correct. other countries already studied, but it's already started and growing. So, we, we try to support them. And then it's very good. And also, um, I remembered... Um, I think few weeks ago, I have a meeting with uh, several psychiatrists, and then mm -hmm. uh, she uh, she she's a very uh, senior psychiatrist, but she also think that uh, especially among the medical students, because uh, they have a very um, high level of stress level during their uh, studies and so on. Okay, so so she 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 the one who gives suggestion to have an area for them to put a PlayStation and so on for them to release their stress and so on. So we see, see that usually before this is all about perception. For now, we can see that people are accepting it and things is mm -hmm. it's part of the uh, of the good thing in our life. So, so yep, 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 it will start growing. Yep. Definitely. And uh, last but not least, Datuk Lat, can we assume that the future of esports is very bright in Malaysia? You don't have to assume. It's already here. If you remember, <laughs> I remember the, our first MCO 1.0, right? I saw this message sent by a housewife to the Prime Minister. PM, please take my husband and to the uh, make him a frontliner because he's just playing games at home. <laughs> so it will, can only grow. The only uh, challenge we have is uh, whether the community or the government or other interest people, people like mm -hmm. Doc and also the lawyer, Mr. Richard, should we should all combine our effort to make this a uh, dignified game. Because this is the real game for the rakyat. Everybody loves it. You know, I I, uh, I was in charge of this program at Malay College, uh, mm -hmm. which I went to. We have an old boys weekend. So mm -hmm. in years before this, Every year, there is a chess competition between the student and old boy. We couldn't get one chess player because everybody was playing FIFA and Dota 2. <laughs> so they, they don't play chess anymore. So the newer generations. It, it yeah? shows. Yeah, the new, this is the new norm. <laughs> so it's what created the new norm before new norm came. So give, give it dignity. I think it's, uh, this, this burden is upon all of us. 
and I'm glad the your organization, yeah, our esports integrated is doing uh, some some something on this. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hanya saya ada something nak tambah. I, uh, yes. I remember. Uh, Sudah so cakap <laughs> sekarang. Uh, sekarang macam a lot of people want to do e-sport. I remember during the PKP yang first, the first MCO. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, one uh, e-sport, my stay at home. My my stay at home e-sport competition uh, tournament. During okay. the first MCO, is under Ministry of uh, Youth and Sports. At that uh, time, yes. the, okay. yang, uh, yang ramai yang enroll itu berapa ramai? About 20,000. Yeah. Individu who enroll uh, to that tournament, you see, twenty thousand is not a very small number. It's a very big number. Mm, big so twenty thousand. Yes. Uh, yep, yep. Mm -mm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, our panel today, Dr. Zatul, Mr. Richard, and Dato' Lat Shariman. So, uh, ladies and gent, so let's see if um, the brands out there or the people out there that's watching this um, this session today. And if they want to reach out to you to collaborate, like Dr. Zato say, you know, we, we are looking forward to more collaborations uh, in this industry. So let's say, uh, Doctor, if let's say they want to reach out to you, how can these uh, people reach out to you? Okay, uh, there are several ways uh, to contact me. So uh, for now, our page is uh, currently uh, under, uh, we, we hide under maintenance. So you can uh, always email me at Zato Ipah, Z-A-T-U-L-I-F-F-A-H at usim.edu.my or another email is esportsmedica e-s-p-o-r-t-s-m-e-d-i-c-a at gmail.com or maybe um, when you go to any tournament and we have a booth there you can always uh, come to us and say hi or maybe you can check out the Malaysia Youth Council Facebook page or esport Darukuchi's page yep on Facebook I see. Thank you very much, Doctor. And uh, Dato' Lai, if let's say people were trying to find out more about the MESF and uh, want to pitch in ideas to you, how can they reach you, Dato'? Contact me at my Facebook. Like Shari <laughs> Mani. <laughs> there you yes, go, yes, ladies yes, and gentlemen. Yes. Or, yeah. or join my TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess later we have to get um, our videographer to actually link out your TikTok account as well. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> And uh, finally, Mr. Richard, if let's say they want to reach out to you for legal advice, especially when it comes to esports, how do they reach out to you, sir? Yeah, thank you, thank you. I I hope I'm not in breach of the bar council advertising rule, but um, <laughs> basically, yeah, R W C we are quite uh, yeah, uh, R W C is quite fortunate uh, to be to have presence uh, across the social media. Uh, so you can look for our website. Uh, very simple, just Google our name. Richard Wee Chambers. Then from the website, you can see our videos and uh, on RWC TV and YouTube. We have a Twitch channel, RWC Twitch. Uh, and we also have a Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, uh, LinkedIn, where most of our serious staff are there. So just look for any social media, look for Richard Wee Chambers, and you will find us. And then from there, you can DM us uh, or send an email to us at just write at richardwechambers.com just right at richardwechambers.com then, then that's our motto uh justice and rights so we just call it just right right to list okay. or right r-i-g-h-t r-i-g-h-t right <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you very yes, much right. mr mr richard well there you have it ladies and gentlemen our panel for today and once again thank you to the Ministry of uh, Youth and Sports and as well as Esports Integrated for organizing Esports uh, Integrated Conference 2021. And uh, before we end, um, I guess we will see the audience uh, shortly in the Q&A session shortly after this. A lot of time, a lot of hours on screen, uh, you, they, they don't want to lose their fans. Okay? So that's why they, they try to uh, be online for a long hours. So uh, due to that, they always keep their meals. So even though that they have a lot of money from their income, they already order a very delicious proper meal. But they uh, after they finish being online, they don't have any appetite anymore. So uh, I we have uh, some cases whereby uh, he he said that um, he, uh, he only uh, drink milkshake. That's the only thing that he have in his meal because he don't have any appetite so this is not good uh, based from the physical stuff you can see that um, 
it's not a very healthy physical way. So actually, it's, it's very simple. You do the uh, KKM healthy diet, suku-suku separuh. Ah, suku-suku separuh, you boleh tengok dia punya protein and so on. Ah, benda tu, you already know, but you you did not uh, practice it. So it's a suku-suku separuh. Ah, that's all. And then uh, another problem uh, with um, casual players or pro players or streamers is that they uh, always some of them like to drink energy drink. Okay, any drink drink is not very good because it contains a lot of sugar level. Just in one can to the banyak dah. So it can cause to other um, other problem as well. So in terms of diet, you can start with suku suku separuh uh, and make sure make sure that you um, make a jadual. Okay, make a schedule when you need to stop to have uh, some rest and to eat properly. So that is very important. So whatever it is, playing video games is not um, a problem. Okay, bukan bukan kata macam benda tak betul ke apa. No, it's okay because everybody have their own interest uh, some of them like to play indoors or outdoors so it's okay but don't play it excessively so make a schedule you know when you need to stop and then you need to have uh, some rest and eat properly uh, okay okay so, so you can start with making schedule and then you eat uh, uh, less um, any drinking okay that's that's a little bit about the diet thing can can, can i add a bit uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I diet ni soalan tu doktor aja. Ya. <laughs> diet actually ya, yang tanya ni adik ni lah. Yang tanya ni uh, uh, diet is a problem for everybody. Hmm. Good dieting ya. Yeah? Uh, for me, I think I'm a bit overweight also. <laughs> but uh, like do doctor said, number one is excessive. You cannot be excessive. Number two. I think there is a role to play among gamers to show that why they're playing, they say, oh, this is my uh, good diet uh, break or something like that. Uh -uh. Number one is eating. Uh, uh. Number two, the more importantly, is your sitting down. They have said the sitting is the new smoking, where s sitting down for a long period of time is very bad for you. You have to get up and walk around or play while standing invent something lah. This is uh, upon uh, gamers that they have to number one incorporate uh, a good diet and probably show show other people. Oh, this is my diet break. Uh, I mean, a good nutrition break or something like that. Start something new which is uh, can be followed by other people who are watching your stream or uh, apa, uh, engaging with your games. Lah, sikit lah. Oh, okay. Jangan <laughs> Betul betul betul. Ai nak tambah sikit. Uh, tak tahu lah, mesti dapat idea punya. <laughs> <laughs> eh, ai nak tambah sikit boleh tak? Ai nak ai nak so, 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 ha. soalan. Ada tak? Ambil soalan, ambil soalan apa apa. For who? For who? Oh, for me. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry. I I rasa macam for, for game, game, game ni lah. Kecil quiz lah. I rasa sekarang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Macam kita build a fortune lah. <laughs> yeah. Itulah. Um, uh, okay. Uh, terima kasih. Soalan ni bagus juga. Tapi actually the uh, the stigma um, is an evergreen stigma whenever there is a new sports. Kalau kita ingatkan dulu 20 years ago, there is this thing called X Games. Uh, oh. There was quite apprehension against X Games at the time. Uh, people were saying, mana boleh skateboard be a game? Uh, how can wall, wall climbing or rock climbing be a sport? And look at where they are now. Uh, of course, saya setuju, uh, kalau compare with uh, X Games, is very physical and, you know, require lots of uh, energy compared to esports. Uh, esports on the other is very technical, very... Uh, mental and a quick uh, movement of the hands and fingers. Um, but it, it's a natural thing when something is new. Uh, but uh, I, I believe so long as uh, esports, uh, people like Datuk Lat leading uh, the way and uh, Datuk Anand in Esports Federation leading the way and all the many esports companies around Malaysia leading the way. Uh, and then you know, we get people like Dr. Zatul trying to tell us about our diet, our health. Uh, 
uh, that will definitely go a long way to stop the bad stigma and to be treated like a normal sports. Uh, in fact, I think it is beginning to be treated like a normal sports the last uh, uh, two years during the pandemic. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Just just in terms of, uh, from my group, uh, one of the reasons why we um, form this group is because we want to uh, eliminate the stigma, okay? Always people say that this sport is not good for you and then it's not a sport and so on. So that's why one of the reasons why they put a stigma because uh, people say that it's a bad sport, okay? Menyebabkan addiction and so on. So that's why from, from my team, we try to provide data whether it is really bad or not, something like that. Yeah, so so itulah dia 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 the stigma um tapi sekarang saya boleh nampaklah the stigma is started to change lah. Mm -hmm. I I think this discussion about e-sport whether it's a real sports it has been long and it will go on for, for a long long time to come. All people always associate sports with physical, eh? But there's, there now seem to be a tendency to change the interpretation of what sport is. And I think uh, it's needed and it's called for a time, very timely for e-sports to be integ integ uh, integrated into the mainstream sports. Bukannya kita, uh, we, I, I think uh, right now e-sport is too popular for people to say, no, no, no you, you can't do this anymore. It is going to be accepted in uh, Olympics, uh, the Asian game at Chengdu uh, next next year or, or this year, end of this year, I can't remember. It's uh, already in the a Asia sports, uh, apa nama? the circuit. So, Sukasi, uh, sorry, Sukasi dah lepas dah memang. It is, and delivered, delivered uh, a goal already. So, we are beyond this definition whether it's sports or that. The only thing is the stigma that uh that esports is bad and eh? it's bad for health all that depends on the community because like i said before it is a uh, sport based on community the community itself must correct correct itself get rid of the stigma of your toxicity of your uh, uh bad dieting and um, give it uh like all other sports show that you uh, are representing something that gives uh is it something that is better for the generation to come macam bola lah dulu kan ada ada racial biases apa racist statement semua ni uh, i think the the body yeah company body is what macam msf or even the international one isf perlu uh, need to uh, put some rules uh, to listen to them. In terms of social health. Oh, oh this is yours, Richard, <laughs> definitely. Like, Richard, Richard, uh, tak dengar. Macam like soalan like SPM. <laughs> 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 okay, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I, I actually switched off my mic to read first, but I didn't want to sound like I'm thinking. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, okay, there are a few things off the cuff. I can think of a few things. Of course, number one is uh, like uh, any other sports, we need to look at insurance uh, to do risk management. I think there's some element of insurance to cover. Uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, Players can get injured, they can get uh, maybe, I, I know this is far off, but this is what insurance is meant to be. Like, contohnya kena electrocuted or injured uh, or the, the damage to the hardware, blah, blah, blah. So that's one area maybe they can, there's something to go on. Uh, and then to your, your point, social health and security. Uh, of course, health, I leave it to Dr. Zato to comment. Uh, and uh, I think in terms of security, there are two elements. Uh, one is a real security, much like policeman security. I think every tournament uh, has a lot of their own marshals and guardians and guards and whatever, uh, especially when you have a physical tournament. Very common for that. Uh, the other side is to have technical support to make sure the game start hacking, start e doping, penipuan. Uh, that is another element of security. Uh, marshals need to be trained. Those who play esports will know what I mean by marshals. 
Uh, personally, I feel marshals should be a professional uh, position. Uh, it shouldn't be a part-time pick somebody, just come sit down there to be a part-time marshal. A marshal should be a, a full-time and professional uh, person. That is my view. Uh, and uh, in terms of social, uh, other than the stigma question earlier, uh, there's also social pertaining to uh, the perception, uh, the security. Contohnya, uh, when a person goes into an e-sports center to play, uh, did we verify the identity card of the person to make sure the person is above 18? Uh, I'm sure there are ways to verify the process. Uh, so that's uh, one of the part of social. Um, it's a long way to go. Uh, but, but when I say a long way, I don't think it will take 10 to 20 years. Uh, knowing how fast technology is. I mean, look at the COVID-19 vaccine. We, we got a vaccine in less than a year. Um, so I think technology-wise, we are able to pick up fast in esports. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we are up to mark in maybe two or three years' time. Okay, uh, in terms of health, so the idea is uh, to become a fully protected sport. Okay, so uh, for health aspect, I know that ISN already started to make an uh, initiative to have a, a basic guideline in proper way to, pay, uh, to play healthy gaming. Okay, so it's already started but it's a long way to go. But in order to have a fully protected sport, uh, as we know that the e-sport play is part of Malaysia player sports right now, isn't it? So that, that's why they, they have to have a proper guideline, uh, SOP, to teach this uh, player, to coach them. So that, that's how it can be a fully protected spot, one, in terms of health for the players itself. Okay? So another thing that we, um, uh, uh, one of the things that we can do is, as I said in the forum uh, just now, is that uh, we can have, um, in terms of cyberbully, we have to, uh, to 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 counter the the vulgar words uh, problem, the cyberbullying and so on. So it is one of the way uh, to 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 have a fully protected spot. So this is uh, some of the thing that um, main thing that happen in health area. There's other thing as well, but this this is uh, some of the main thing that have to be covered first, and then followed by the others. So yep, that's what uh, that's what uh, we I think that we can do for health aspects. Um, essentially, my, my, my theme is still the same. Everything must uh, be around the community itself. Because esports it is, it is a community-driven uh, sport. Firstly, I think education is very important. Uh, education, this, uh, I, I don't mean general education. I mean, if you are a sports athlete, uh, you're a martial or you're whatever, uh, even a uh, shoutcaster, you should go and learn this at a proper uh, uh, certif certificated uh, academy or platform. Dapatkan, uh, get your credentials so that you can be more accepted. With education, usually, you, with education, usually uh, other traits, yeah, uh, the bad habits or that will will follow uh, will follow with good habits. Dia macam dulu lah. If you plan uh, flowers. I remember when I was small, uh, which probably most of you are not born yet. We every time DBKL plants a flower, somebody will ambil it. Bawa balik rumah. But upon time, yeah, ah, <laughs> it was like that before. I don't know whether it's still going on now. But with education, a lot of people think, oh, this is this is good for the city, oh. and then uh, I want my city to look good. So it's it's better to leave it there. And then I can probably buy and make, uh, Panama, produce more flowers, uh, uh, maybe nicer than the BKLs. But uh, I think this takes time. Uh, Richard and Doc said just now, whatever it is, I think give give time. But I think for esports, which is going very, very fast, don't let uh, uh, this opportunity, yeah? opportunity to present something good for uh, the the community uh, is uh, done by some, somebody else. Do yourself. Self-regulation. What do you think of that? Oh, this is a take-home message. Lah, kira ni. Uh, 
practice gaming hygiene and um, healthy gaming. So I can see, yeah, sit properly and then keep, uh, apa, jaga mata pendengaran and so on. Yep, make jadual. Give esports a good name. Whatever you part of the community, it starts with you. Ah, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, just uh, to just again repeat, I would like to thank ESI for having us here. Uh, it's always an honor to be invited um, uh, and to share our thoughts. I hope eventually Malaysia not only will be uh, verily and properly uh, governed for esports, regulated properly. I really want us to be the leading nation uh, in this region, if not the world, for esports regulation. So hopefully, my personal dream that we have a special esports tribunal, uh, macam court of arbitration for sports in Switzerland. I want to have an esports tribunal. I hope that dream can come true and it be located here in Malaysia. Uh, thank you very much for logging in. Everybody, please stay safe. Take your uh, vaccine uh, and uh, wash your hands. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.